Alright, so today I want to talk about three moves that you need to be punishing in Guilty Gear Strive because they are going to get spammed, right? If you don't punish them, they're just going to keep doing them. So first one I want to show is this, and that's Mega Fist. So you can do it forwards, you can do it backwards. The backwards one, this one is plus. This one is negative. And you're probably saying to yourself, oh, I'll just anti it, right? I'll just 6P or DP. That's the right way to think about moves that are in the air that aren't this, that aren't the Mega Fist. And that's because it has a giant hitbox and it's going to trade or beat your anti-air 99% of the time. And let me go ahead and show you that. All right, quick note about training mode. I set it to only have a record button on my hitbox because I don't have the other button. I don't have space for another button to set play. So what I do after I record is just put play after position reset. And then when you reset, he'll just do it immediately. You can also change it to start slightly late or start late. Just a little tip if you don't have... Um, whatever play button you need on your stick forward mega fist this one is minus six so whatever minus six move that you can do on your character definitely check out the dust loop wiki for strive because they do have all the frame data up well most of it so pick your character on the uh the wiki and figure out what you can do in six frames of startup right so let's go ahead and take a look at what giovanna can do and that's pretty much the best thing i could find if he's point blank right and that is uh 5p into uh, DP, right? 5P into DP. And that's what it should look like. You can also, you can do two of them usually. So you can do like uh, that if they're really close, but you'll see it pushes them a little bit too far. So I'm just doing one jab into DP. A little bonus for you with Potemkin specifically, if you go into the mission tutorials and you scroll to like the second to last or the very last um, missions, it teaches you how to punish Hammerfall, which um, is the one where he like puts his fist together so definitely check that out in the tutorial it, it'll make you find your own punish but it already has the bot set up and everything so i'm not going to show it here definitely go check out the mission mode and do it with your character it does let you select your character and one more thing before we move on from potemkin that i want to make sure i mention is we're punishing the recovery frames of the mega fist right we're not trying to catch him in it because if we do it's just going to beat our anti-air right See, it, it beats every, it beats a lot of things because of how big he is and how big the hitbox is on that move. So you want to block it and then punish it. Like that. Alright, so one thing that we need to make sure that we understand with Eno is her little stroke in the tree thing. Is that there's two versions of it. So there is the slash version, like this. This one's minus 7. And then there's the heavy slash version. And this one is plus. But the thing about the plus one, the big one, is see how much further she has to go. You can actually interrupt this dash. You could probably interrupt this one too, but it's just really hard and you'll get counter hit a lot. So I, if you're confident that you can do it, feel free. Definitely lab it out. But for me, I'm just letting this one rock because it's minus seven. So first, let's take a look at the heavy version, the one with the long dash that you can check. Um, I'm not going to say fairly easily because it does get mixed in with a lot of other parts of her neutral. You have to be looking for it. But if you do start to catch on that they're, you know, spamming that one or they're just using it a lot, you can get some decent damage, right? Like that. Now let's take a look at the slash version. This is a version that I'm not as confident in punishing or trying to get around, right? So we're going to have her do it. And she's minus 7 right there. So what Giovanna can do is, I think, 5k or close slash. But you're not close enough to do close slash. So let's try 5k. And that hits for a little bit of damage. But it also pushes her back. And she might just do it again. But what you can do is if they're spamming the small one and you're, like, really ready for it, you can check this one. It's just very hard. But just keep an eye out and look at what they're doing, right? If they're going to just keep doing it to get in... Just be ready to try and interrupt it, just to try and get some pressure off of you and maybe get a punish. If you do block it and they only do it once, try a minus seven move. I mean, I mean a plus seven move or a plus six move. This one is definitely going to take some labbing just because of how, you know, how well good you are reacting to it or how well you're reacting to it and what your character can do, right? Obviously, the game's been out like a day, so I don't know very much outside of my own character yet. And if the talk of frame data is really like putting you off to watching the rest of this video or learning um, anything more because it just feels like overwhelming and you don't want to get into all the numbers, don't feel like you have to, right? That's just a way for me to express uh, what I'm thinking, right? And how I'm finding the punishes. If you don't want to do that, just lab it. 
right? Just set the bot to do it and lab the punish yourself. You don't need to know the numbers. You don't need to know the raw data like that. So the last move we're going to talk about is Soul's Dragon Install Super, the command grab, whatever you want to call it, the heavy mob cemetery, the one where he flies across the screen, grabs you by the head, and throws you on the ground. This is a move that I got hit by a few times yesterday because I didn't understand that one, it was a command grab, and two, that it's not a zero frame command grab like Eno's is. Eno's uh, command grab super is zero frames, which means if you're not inputting jump or backdash or something like that, before it starts up, you're not going to get it while it's running. She's just going to grab you if you're in range. But Souls is not like that, thankfully. And I'm going to show you what we can do to avoid it completely. So first, let's take a look at it raw, right? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to get hit by it. You see, he has to do this little dash. He's going to grab you and slam you. That's the super that I'm talking about. So now that we're familiar with it, let's take a look at what we can do. And what I want you to pay attention to is my little virtual stick there in the bottom right. You'll see it does not start moving until the super starts. You see a mashing jump here, and I'm out. And you can do a, a couple things out of this, right? So we don't have to be pressing anything, and we can burst, right? If you're really late, if you really, uh, you know, completely forget to press jump, j you can panic burst it, right? You can burst that, or you can jump, right? Jump is probably the best bet. You can forward jump even. So you see a mashing forward jump out. You can back jump, and th there's just a bunch of things you can do. You can probably even air dash. Let's do that. Yeah, you can air dash over him. You might even be able to air dash backwards and punish him. So let's take a look at that. No, I couldn't do it backwards. And the way that I decided these three moves specifically that I wanted to punish or avoid uh, was they're just things that I'm getting hit by a lot, right? These three characters I played against are the ones that. I was getting hit by the most, if that makes sense. I was getting hit by things that I didn't understand, and I figured if I don't understand it, there's somebody else out there who also doesn't understand it. So I figured I'd lab it and share these three. And there's going to be more of these videos because there's more things that I just don't know yet. But these three are things that I specifically found in my gameplay that just were giving me a lot of trouble, and I felt like I wanted to share. And before I let you go, just a quick little update on the channel. I do want to start the series soon where I try to get to the Celestial floor or whatever. Uh, I got placed in the sixth floor. I'm on the eighth one right now. My theory is that if you beat that little soul bot that it makes you fight at the beginning uh, in the in like the online tutorial, I think it puts you in, in floor six. And then if you lose to it or you lose a round, maybe it puts you in four because that's how it was in Grand Blue. If you didn't play Grand Blue, you played like three games against bots and then two real people. And if you lost like a certain amount you got put in C rank and if you won a certain amount you got put in B rank and I think they just did that all with one soul bot which is is kind of weird but I guess that's the only way they knew how to do it uh, but the rank system is very odd in this game uh, so I'm, I'm not sure how long the series will last but I do want to start it soon and I am on floor 8 for those of you who are wondering anyways if you enjoyed today's video if you learned anything um, consider subscribing and thank you so much for watching